Hello, hello. Welcome to the show. It's Marshall. Thank you very much for tuning in to the NAM recap show for 2019 Winter NAM. Um, I am joined here by a couple of um, pals, synth, synth lovers. We've got uh, Mr. Cow Food on the left, and we've got Echo Craft on the right. How you guys doing? Good, great, man. And we're we're gonna, you know, go through a bunch of stuff. There was a lot of things that happened at NAM this year. Um, you know, we've got Behringer, Korg, Arturia, all all the main guys except for I think Roland pretty much had something coming coming out for us. And uh, Echo Craft, you actually attended NAM this year, so I'd like to kind of start with you a little bit. And why don't you tell me about the experience? Tell everyone. Well, um, it was. Uh... It was very overwhelming. Um, I was the it was my first time there, and I, I went with my wife, uh, and it was beautiful in Anaheim. Beautiful, the whole weekend was just gorgeous, uh, gorgeous weather. Um, coming from the East Coast, leaving behind uh, eight degree weather and going to seventy five to eighty degree weather, and you know they thought it was cold at night. It was fifty. Um, I thought it was gorgeous. <laughs> Uh, 50 i'm like where's my shorts and t-shirt yeah exactly i had like a hoodie on and that was it i was like yeah it's it's still kind of warm with the hoodie on but um but no it was awesome uh yeah the first day when i landed i got there and uh was thursday i, sh I didn't so I, first of all i didn't plan properly um next year i want to i'm going to leave wednesday and leave monday uh to, to come home um because I got there, we got off the plane, we flew for six hours, got off the plane, got our stuff, got our car, which we didn't need. Uh, that's another story. Um, <laughs> found out where my hotel was, which is actually in walking distance to the convention center. Um, and so we got there by 1.30 in the afternoon. It was at the convention center by quarter past two. And basically walked in and my mind was blown. Um, I didn't know where to begin. I didn't know where to start. Um, it was unbelievable. I started off, you know, do they give I you like a, do they give you like a, a bag with like a program or something that tells you where all the shit is? Yeah. You have a map. Um, I have, I had a map, uh, and the map is huge and I should, I should have it here somewhere and I pulled it up and show you guys it's huge. Um, and so I had already plotted out before I went. I had the app on my phone. Uh, and I said, okay, these are the places I'm going to go. Uh, so I figured, well, I'll hit the first floor as I walked into the main building. And I saw nothing but pro audio, like, uh, you know, um, Crane Song, uh, Focus Right, all those big names were there. Um, it was awesome. Manly was there, and I'd already seen all that stuff at AES. So I'm I'm on the hunt for synths. That was my my main objective of going to this yes. show. <laughs> um, I didn't find a synth the first day I was there, uh, and that oh, was very the whole day and just. Yeah, dude, it was literally, I was roaming around like uh, a chicken with its head cut off. No um, sense for an entire day. Wow. Well, yeah. that place is like, well, it's like freaking the size of Disneyland. Like, what? where is it at? Is it some convention center? Well, that's funny because Disneyland is right behind it. Okay. Um, <laughs> no, it's it really Anaheim, is. so yeah. Yeah. So it's the Anaheim Convention Center. It's the size of a football field, but it's three floors. Um, so I said, screw it let's go upstairs so we went upstairs to the second floor and that's where i found gibson and e, uh, esp and all the guitar manufacturers were up there and that was a lot that was really cool i play guitar so i was really digging that um i got to sit on the uh guitar of thrones uh it looks like the, the game of thrones with all the swords only this is this is the gibson guitar of thrones with all the th they're, they're, instead of swords they're guitars bunch of gibsons uh, uh as, yeah. a, as a chair yeah. Oh, that's cool. Uh, yeah. So they <laughs> they and they hand you a guitar. There's two models there, and they hand you a guitar, and um, you basically uh, sit on the on the, the throne with the with a, a Les Paul. And I did the whole sunglasses thing, and I gave the the horns and the tongue sticking out. So <laughs> I no, said, I got to do this. No gang signs. 
But I, <laughs> I'm just I got to. I was like, I got to do this proper if I'm going to do this. So, uh, so I got a pretty cool picture of that. Um, then I, I saw a bunch of drums, uh, drum stuff. Uh, Pearl, I had their own. Like uh, weird, the weird thing too is a lot of them didn't have booths. They were actually in rooms. Um, they were physical rooms, like like convention rooms, like oh, wow. you know, meeting rooms. Um, so that was pretty cool. Um, ESP went in there. That blew my mind. So. I was basically toast uh, by the end of that excursion. So that was day one? That was day one with maybe four hours. That was a, a four-hour journey. On the hunt for synths, and you found Pro Audio and a Gibson throne. A Gibson right? and drums. And drums. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, so then, you know, we went, got something to eat. I was spent. was in bed by 10 o'clock that night. Um, got up really early the next morning. Um, went and had breakfast and then went down to the convention center. My wife and I walked down. That's how close we were. So I had a, I rented a Jeep and I didn't even need it. Um, <laughs> and anyway, so we, so we get there and that was it. I said, this is it. I got to find my stuff. So we walk in and I don't know why, but we walked into a different side of the convention center. And as I walked in, there's the Autoria booth standing right there. And I went, oh yes, oh, I'm home. Yeah. There you are. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, it's a very overwhelming experience. Um, that day, uh, I got to see the Roland booth was phenomenal. The Pioneer booth was phenomenal. Uh, the Korg booth was unbelievable. Um, and then there was a whole bunch of, um, I went around the corner because obviously Roland and Boss are the same company. Right. And there was the boss experience, and there was some guy from Sweden, uh, Shred uh, Meister, playing guitar through some boss pedals. He was unbelievable. Like, the talent in this guy was just stupid. Um, and this is the ironic part, and then I'll, we'll talk about gear. But So there's a wall of people on the left-hand side of me watching this gentleman play guitar, which is on the right-hand side. So all I had to do was get through those people and turn to the left, and I would have been in synth heaven. But because I couldn't see anything, I went straight. <laughs> straight took me into cymbals, <laughs> drums, and more guitars. Uh, and I was like, where the fuck <laughs> are all of the synthesizers? I didn't see I didn't, well, I got to see Moog, uh, Moog, Moog Foundation. Right. Now, which was really cool because I got a chance to talk to uh, some really cool guys uh, at that. And that's for the Moog, Bob Moog Museum, um, which I donate to. And I thought that was really cool that I got to meet those dudes. The problem was Moog wouldn't allow you to see any of their gear unless you made an appointment and went to the house in L.A., Right, they always uh, do something off-site. Yeah, uh, during Nam, they. I, I don't know when they started doing that, but uh, yeah, I think it was last year. Did they charge money for that? Like, if you wanted no. to go. You just... But um, from what I understood, from when I talked to some of the guys there, they said the appointment list was crazy. Like, you had to, uh, the first day that you got there, you had to make the appointment, because um, the list was crazy. Um, I. Be I nice get a little if they just went to the show. shit like that. Yeah. Well, that's yeah, because two years ago they did. Um, so that I was just kind of like, really, Moog, like, why? You know what I mean? Um, so that kind of bummed me out. Behringer wasn't there. Um, Behringer also was in an off site place in LA uh, mm. called the Pre NAM show. Okay. Uh, and I know like the guys from Sonic State and a lot of other uh, press related people were able to go to that and see. Uh, the new uh, UBX and all that stuff. Um, so that was very disheartening for me because I really, that's what I went there for. Um, so it, it was an experience. Uh, there's definitely better planning involved on my part. Um, I'm not going to go to LA because I don't know if you guys are familiar with LA traffic. Yeah. Uh, I've been there. A you know, times. Anaheim and L.A. Um, were looking at maybe an hour and a half 
ride. Uh, okay, so then you get into traffic, you're looking at three to four hours in traffic. Yeah. Uh, bumper to so, bumper. Yeah, right. Yeah, I, I was like, there's no way I'm doing that. Um, so that's why when we flew in, we fl I was going to fly into LAX. I ended up uh, changing my flight and flying directly into Long Beach, which was awesome because it was only a 25-minute ride from Long Beach Airport to my hotel. Well, there you go. That's a pro tip right there. Don't go in into traffic. LAX. Yeah, don't damn. go to LAX. Um, go, or um, you could go to the John Wayne Airport, which is in Orange County, which is the same distance. Um, so it's kind of cool because it's very nice around that area, so you don't have to deal with the L.A. traffic and all that stuff. Uh, people are super cool. Uh, but anyway, that was the... That was the extent of the first day and second day. The third day, um, I didn't really get a chance to spend any time at NAM um, because I had to make a detour and visit a relative. Um, so I had to do that, uh, and that was fine. Uh, I didn't mind that. It was kind of like it's kind of like a break, to be honest with you, because I was so overwhelmed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then um, Saturday night, we ended up going to the Tech Awards, uh, which was really cool. Um, a bunch of really cool uh, companies won awards. And I got to see, I got a chance to see Peter Frampton uh, win the Les Paul Award, which is a very prestigious award uh, to win. And I uh, saw him perform, which was mind blowing. I saw Herbie Hancock uh, give Leslie Ann Jones an award, who she's a huge engineer. Uh, first female engineer to do really anything. Um, and now she works for Skywalker Studios. So she won the Lifetime Achievement Award. Uh, so it was, that, was, that was actually pretty cool. I saw a different side of the industry other than the Grammys, um, which I prefer to be with uh, that side of the industry. I know that sounds awful to say, but, you know, the Grammys to me is really, you know, who you know and, and how much flash do you have, you know. Um, and no, no offense to the Grammys. I'm a, I'm a, I'm an Academy member, but, uh, because I'm an Academy member, I got a chance to go to NAM, and I prefer to go to like the tech awards because that's, that's my industry. That's what I do. I do tech, you know what I mean? And, uh, so that was really cool to actually, uh, be a part of that, uh, real quick. I know I'm going on and I'll shut up. Um, so after NAM. Uh, I saw Warren Hart. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Warren Hart. Um, I watch his stuff on YouTube. He's YouTube. He's a um, very uh, formidable um, engineer, mastering engineer, mix engineer. Won several Grammys. Uh, I think he's won an Emmy. Um, super nice guy. He won uh, a Tech Award. Uh, and I got to meet Dave Smith, guys. That was fucking awesome that's way <laughs> cool <laughs> um yeah i got to meet dave smith i actually uh i don't know if you saw the photo i have of him yeah i saw that on uh twitter yeah i um i got to meet him and and i gotta tell you starstruck i uh i was gonna give him an echo craft t-shirt uh because <laughs> everybody always you know everybody always goes to shows and they're like hey man you know do you have a t-shirt hey man do you have you know can i get a sticker I said, you know what, I want to give something to those guys because they give so much back to us, even though, you know, we pay for their instruments and stuff. But if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be doing and talking about what we're talking about. So I wanted to give yeah. something back, you know. Yeah. That's cool. um, right. So I, 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 I walk out of the booth after meeting Dave and um, he was very polite, very nice. Definitely, I took a couple of hits off. And he was drinking whiskey. That's his thing. Uh, <laughs> I was going to ask, did he, did he offer you some whiskey? <laughs> no, no, no. No, he didn't <laughs> offer me a shot. Um, there's another guy in there. There's a whole bunch of people in there. This, here's the other thing. That booth was the hardest booth I ever searched for in the whole place uh, because it wasn't a booth. It wasn't a room. It was the ticket booth. And on the map, it was marked TKLB. And oh. I was like, so I had to go up to one of the convention people and ask them and say, hey, what is TKLB? Because everything is, you know, 100043 or 00012 or 0200, right? It all had numbers. So she was puzzled. So she 
it made some uh, uh, got some information from somebody else come back to me and said uh, that is actually a ticket booth. Uh, and she told me where to go. So my wife and I found it. And there it was, this little room, had shades. The shades were pulled down. It was kind of dark in there. And Dave was hanging out with some cronies and some other dude that was uh, in there checking out the new, um, uh, the Prophet, uh, the big one that he just came out with. We talked about it the last time. The XL, I think it was. Um, but yeah, he was in there and... and I didn't want to interrupt him, so I quietly stood there, and I had my Sonic State T-shirt on. Uh, <laughs> and he said, can I help you? And I said, "I, Dave Smith, I said, I just wanted to meet you and say hello, and I was wondering if I could get a picture with you. And, hey, I just bought one of your instruments. I told him I bought the Prophet Rev 2. Um, and he was like, oh, really? He goes, how do you like it? I mean, he was super gracious, just a really nice guy. And, um, I mean, he's a legend, man. He, he invented MIDI. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, <clears throat> You know, um, so I, I did a, a, a selfie snapshot uh, shot with him and he smiled and stuff. And, and I said, thank you very much. And he said, any time, man. And uh, so I leave and my wife was waiting for me outside. And she said, did you give him a card? Did you give him a T-shirt? And I went, oh, fuck. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> that happens, so, though. I mean, you're kind of starstruck and you forget, you know. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it was like seeing Bob Moog. You know what I mean? Or like it would have been like seeing Alan Perlman. You know what I mean? Like yeah. those are the those are the legends, you know. Um, so uh, so it was, it was pretty cool meeting him, though. I mean, that's definitely and I got the picture and that made me kind of feel good, you know. Yeah. Um, but uh, what I what I was going to say was um, the interesting thing is uh, I. I didn't get a chance. I brought a camera rig with me. And. Um, I was going to video everything I did, even including that meeting with Dave. And uh, I never took it out of my backpack. That's how overwhelming this place is, guys. I, I was just like blown away, you know. Um, so it, it was it was uh, it was very interesting. It was very uh, I met the guys from Strymon, um, gave them a T-shirt. Jack's really cool guy. I met the guy from Hosa. They in turn messaged me back and offered me um, uh, a package deal to get Hosa uh, products, um, possible endorsement, which I thought was really cool. That's awesome. Um, cool. Dude, Gaz Williams uh, friended me on um, Instagram, which <laughs> blew my mind. Uh, that was huge. Oh, Gaz. <laughs> right? Um, that was cool. Uh Talked to him, chatted with him for a little bit on Instagram, which was really fun. Uh, and he was there. But every single time I was somewhere, they were either one booth ahead of me or like behind me. And I never got a chance to meet up with any of them. Nick Bat was like everywhere. And I, I literally probably walked by him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, the stars that were there, the rock stars, the the... Uh, Jordan Rudis was there with uh, and jammed out with um, with um, oh my God, what's his name? Divine. Uh, is it Richard Divine? Richard Divine. Yeah. Yeah, man, he jammed with Richard Modular. Divine. Yeah, one of the booths. Like, I mean, just how cool is that? You know what I mean? Like, um, but yeah. So I never got a chance to shoot any video um, other than what I shot with my phone. Um, and I didn't do very good planning. I met the guys from Earthquake and Devices because I do use some of their pedals um, and gave them a T-shirt. They were really cool, very gracious. Um, and anyway, like I started to say, Warren Hart actually friended me uh, because I congratulated him on Instagram about getting the award. I said, hey, Warren, I was there to see you get your award. Congratulations. That was really cool. And he was like, thanks, mate. He says, oh, anytime you need something, let me know. By the way, here's a subscription to blah, blah, blah. And I went, what the fuck is going on right now? Um, and and uh, Dangerous Music um, uh, friended me. Uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with their products. Um, they make like summoning, summoning boxes and, and compressors and stuff. And I had seen them at AES. Um, uh, Mark Stikos is the uh, is one of the gentlemen from there, and um, 
had a chance to talk to him and, and next then I know they started following me on Instagram. Um, so it was a lot of cool stuff is happening just because I went there and talked to people. And that's yeah. all it is, man. It's, it's having a conversation. Yeah. You know, absolutely. Um, well, and they're just but, as crazy about all this stuff as we are, you know, they just happen to yeah. be successful in the industry. But they're just people, you know, who love synthesizers yeah. and instruments and music. That's our, that's our crowd, man. Yeah. And I, you know, I got a chance to, uh, I, so I went to, this is really funny. So I'm in Autoria and I, and I, I go to check out the micro freak and there's this one guy who's just hogging one of them. And he, he wouldn't just let, I mean, he was there for a good 30 minutes. I'm like, oh, bro, wow. let somebody else play. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, <laughs> and and then there was another guy on the other side of me, but the one I had didn't work. Oh, somebody broke it before you got So it. behind me is this tall gentleman, and my wife goes, uh, he works he works for Korg, and he had a Korg badge on, and he was checking out their new synth. So I looked at him, and I said, hey, man, I said, I can't get it going. Maybe you can. So he goes, well, when all else fails, reboot. So he yanks the freaking power cable out and plugs it back in. And it starts up. And he looks at me, and he's got the headphones on. And I go, anything? And he goes, nope. And I go, great. So he put the headphones down, and we both walked away. I followed him to the code booth. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't, get it, you didn't get any hands-on time with the micro freak? I, I'm telling Not you. Not with the working one guy, anyway? No, man, this guy, I, and, and even when we circled back around, they were just so slammed with people checking it out. Yeah. Uh, I was, because I was going to go back around and try it, you know what I mean? And I didn't get a chance to. Um, but I got a chance to play with the XD. Um, I, I, I was impressed. I was really impressed with the uh, the mini, mini log, uh, log, log, whatever, XD. Um, yeah. uh, it, it's definitely nice. Um, I I liked the way the filter reacts now. Uh, it's a little bit different. I don't know if you guys had a mini loop, um, but uh, the filter is definitely nice on it. I have one. I like it. But the filter on this, it's uh, also I'm going to say I'll wrap it up with this. It's it's a pro loop that they stuck in a little box. Yes. Exactly. Yeah, it is. Well, it's, it's a combination of the mini log, the monolog, and a prologue. Prologue. One box. Yep. Yeah. That's it what is. it is. And, and it sounded we'll, really good. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, and um, so the filter is the same as the monolog, from what I've understood. It's just a two pole, or or it's based on that. So it's got more beef than the mini log. Yes, it's definitely got uh, more beef than the than the, the mini log, and it. What I liked about it as I was as I was um, bringing it up, I wasn't losing the low end, yeah. and that's what happens on the mini log. You lose the low end a lot on that filter. Um, yep. So it was kind of nice that that that's what the prologue is like. Uh, it was kind of nice that that did that. Um, the other thing uh, that I liked about it, I, I and maybe I'm wrong, but I think that the screen on the oscillator. Uh, the oscilloscope, I mean, is a little bit bigger, um, and I did like that. It and it, it reacted look, a little bit better. It does look a little bigger. Yeah, it's, yeah, that's it's definitely different. Big. Yeah, um, and it reacted better. It wasn't like mine actually has a slight delay to it. Um, that one was spot on, man. Like it was Instant. scary. Yeah. Um, cool. Trying to think of what else. Uh, oh. Uh, the little joystick on it um, yes. is way better than the little slide control. Yeah, that slide yeah. control was kind of not my favorite part of the mini log. But the uh, no. the joystick, that's kind of M1. Did, didn't the M1 have have a little joystick on it? I know they've Actually, they've made sense with the wave Mon station. Wave station. Wave station. I was gonna say it's more yeah, it's more like a wave <clears throat> station. Yeah, joystick. Um, no, it's cool, man. I I thought it was cool. <coughs> was the gas meter up? Um, no. Can you believe that, boys? I'm I'm shocked. I had <laughs> I have no what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I I have no desire to purchase anything. Well that that uh, means just, that means you're in a good spot though, equipment wise. And you did just make a 
a recent purchase of a Rev Two, you know. Yeah. And you've got quite, it, quite, quite a bit pretty. of gear. Yeah. Have you had some time with it yet? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, uh, I've been, I've been messing with that thing like every day. That's so you got the keys, right? You, you swap the desktop for yeah, the keys. Yeah, I'll show you. I don't know if you guys can. Yeah, look there at it that. is. Ooh, right, nice. right below the uh, the matrix fruit. Yeah, maybe, maybe I should have talked to Dave and said, "Hey, man, can you send that desktop back so I can have you know?" Since we're friends now. Yeah, since well, we're since we're buds. Since, it's so I can go, so I can go, you know, add some more polyphony. <laughs> you know why not? <laughs> it's funny because um, I got the eight voice and I should have got the sixteen. Um, the nice but thing it's is, funny because I. I did say that to him. I said I should have kept the module, uh, and he said, "Well, you know, you still can buy it." You know, he's just like, <laughs> <laughs> he's not wrong. Uh, Your buddy, right no. now, I'll give you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I mean, um, it's it's very nice, and I'm probably gonna actually get the card later on. I think I'm gonna beef it up to the 16. How much is the upgrade for that, by the way? Well. That's the thing. If I bought it with it, it would have been one hundred and fifty dollars cheaper. Uh, cheaper. Okay. Uh, it's five ninety nine for the card. Um, well, which is kind of at least you get to split it up a little bit. You know. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. Once I pay it off, I think that's what I'm going to do. Um, but I really, I, I, I mean, even like when I went over to the the um, the Korg section there and I played with the the new module, uh, the modular. Uh, Volca modular. Um, yeah, I'd be honest with you, man. I, I didn't like it. I, 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 I played around. It comes with those. Remember the um, the um, work stat. Yeah. And roll, that came with those. Moog. Yeah. Yeah, it came with the little wires. Uh, that's what it comes yeah. with. It comes with these little patch cables. Um, I wonder. Don't get me wrong. I wonder. Are they? Are they like the ones that come with the uh, MS20 Mini? Like these these little eighth-inch uh, or three no. by millimeter? No. They're smaller than no, this? They're smaller. Oh, yeah. shit. No, they're like, the, they're like the Workstat ones where they're actually just wires that have some uh, heat sink around the edges uh, the, of the bottom of the cable. Oh, my God. Um, so, I, and, and I, so I was playing around with it, and I, you know, I put the headphones on, and, and uh, I, was, I was patching and stuff, and, and I... I I will tell you, it's it's big. It sounds really big. It sounds well. Volcas are amazing anyway, but I mean, it sounds really amazing. Um, it's definitely not my cup of tea. It's definitely not something that I would, you know, I, I would invest in. I don't. I didn't think it was, you know. I mean, it's nice. Well, uh, let me it, ask you this. Let me ask you this. Have you ever had your hands on a zero coast? No, that's a different story. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I didn't mean those to bring up a new story. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> no, those are awesome. But that's got the same thing, right? I mean, because the Volca modular is a West Coast uh, uh, modular, if you will. It's based oh, it's on, def- it's based yeah, on it's Bukla's ideas. Oh, yeah. Look at how tiny right, those right. are. Wow. Well, so if, you it's got, if you notice, it's got like the bulk of the bulk of, uh, colors, too. It's yes. the blue yeah. and the red and the white, yeah. you know. Um. No, I'm not. I, I'm not ragging on it. I just, I it wasn't something that I would purchase. Um, I liked it. Uh, to me, I again, I had modular stuff. I had a modular system. I had a Pittsburgh modular um, system ten, and you know, it's just one of those things where you just, um, yeah, those cases are awesome. Yeah, I was gonna say um, you can even get little cases. I, I guess that'd be just be for Volcas in in general, which is pretty. Yeah, cool. those are just for the Volcas. Yeah. Yeah. But I. I, I'm not modular to me is like, if you're gonna, if you're gonna have, if you have the time and you want to just sit down and get lost in it, it's a great place to be. Um, I, I, that's why I, I got away from modular system. I wasn't really into it. Semi modular is fun. I mean, obviously the mother 32, uh, the neutron stuff like that, the O coast. I like stuff like that. Cause it's hands on, and you can, you don't really need to patch if you don't want to. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and, and you can um, make minimal. Well, I guess you don't have to patch from <laughs> from beginning to end everything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, the yeah. Volca modular is also uh, normalized, I think, so you can you can play it without patching. It. Yeah, you can. I mean, but part of buying something like that is the sure. actual patch. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, the 
Volca drum is something that my gas meter kind of went up to about maybe a 10 on that one. Really? It was kind of like, you know. So this is a this is a shoe in for Echo Craft. <laughs> well, I, I, I have a fetish for drum machines. So yeah, I, I, uh, I love drum machines as well. So I, I, I kind of like the way that uh, laid out. Um, it had some interesting sounds. Um, uh, the screen on it is really kind of cool to get around on because it's basically internal patching that you do with it. Um, somebody had said, yeah. oh, so this is the answer to the DFAM for, for, uh, Korg. And I went, no, stop. <laughs> I was like, no, stop talking. I can tell you right now. No, <laughs> no, don't even, it's like, don't even go there with that. You know what I mean? Um, does it do some cool stuff? Yeah. Um, it sounds really good. I thought it sounded really good. So that was one of the things that I took away from the show and said, maybe that would be something I'd be interested in. Um, but other what than I, that, what I what I heard from the demos of that, it sounded an awful lot like Microtonics uh, VST and also uh, Teenage Engineering's uh, that P, I can't remember the actual number, but they have a uh, one of the well, pocket of operators. The, I'll show you one of these, but it's uh, got the the same guys that do Microtonic um, make right. or helped code. Uh, one of the POs with some software to it, but it's got the same kind of tones, same kind of flexibility as a drum machine, as those those things. So yeah, for me, that's it's kind of already been done. Uh, it's it's nice that they made it into a Volca. But I don't know. It's well, even like you see how it says the waveguide and the body and stuff. I, that was interesting. Uh, it did. It has basically synth sounds in it, so yeah, it, you're able to here. create some. Yeah, you're able to create some pretty cool sounds with it um, yeah. and take sounds that are already created in it and change them up, too. Mm -hmm. um, and, of course, you know, like every Volca, the uh, sequencer, and it's really easy to use um, and a lot of fun to use. So, I mean, like I said, that might be... And it's tiny. That might be, and it's tiny. Yeah. And it's battery-operated. Um, so it's a take-anywhere kind of thing, you know? Um, but, yeah, I... That was it, man. I, I um, so you, you know, go, I, I <clears throat> going back next year. Yes, I'm actually cool. going to Summit M. I'm going to Nashville. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I heard that it's smaller, and I heard that a lot of the um, companies aren't there uh, because Wintenham. That's the big one. Yeah. Um, but I was just like, yeah, you know what? Uh, my wife and I, again, have family in Nashville. So I said, hey, why don't we go down there for the summer and, uh, you know, take a week and go down and check it out. And that'll be our summer vacation, you know. You go visit the fam. I'll hang out at Nam. Hey. Hey, there you go. <laughs> you need a rhyme. So if it's, if, if there's, is there any other stories from Nam you want to share before we get into our, our huge list of uh, gear? Um. Not that I could think off off the top of my head, man. All I know is that I went there and I didn't prepare properly and I was overwhelmed and I brought a camera kit that I never even used and I'm disappointed. Yeah, well, you know, it's an experience. And I like when I went to Knobcon, I know it's a much, much smaller event, but uh, I did the same thing. I brought a camera kit. I did use it, but not as much as I had hoped also because I was right. trying to soak this whole experience in for the first time. I can imagine Nam just being like that times like a million. Yeah, it's crazy, man. I, I literally, at one point, we looked down one end of the convention center and it just went on. And I was like, I just looked at my wife and I go, I don't think we're ever going to reach the end of this place because it's like... <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Because there's just rows and rows and rows. And like even when I was at AES, I mean, there were maybe three rows and AES was small. I mean, it was big, but it was small in comparison to this. You could fit, you know, five or six AES conventions inside NAM. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, it's a whole, in it's a whole industry. So, you know, yeah. every genre of music, every type of instrument, you know, Pro audio, like you said, everything's there. Yeah. And I got, you know, like I said, I got to meet and see some pretty interesting people. And 
I actually saw some people that work for Fishman, because uh, Fishman Audio is right here in uh, Andover, Massachusetts. So I got a chance to see some of those guys. I know them. Uh, so that was kind of cool and hang out with them. Um, and uh, yeah, so I mean, you know, um, uh, Ken Susi, I don't know if you know who Ken Susi is. He plays with uh, Unearth. Um, he's a great guitar player. And so he was there. And so I got a chance to hang out with him and talk to him. Ken's a real nice guy. I met the guitar player from Hate Breed and uh, a lot of metal drummers there too, man. It was crazy. It was like my head was spinning around because I'm an old metal guy. So I was like blown away. I was like, hey, there's a drummer for Trevarium. Hey, there's, you know, I was like, <laughs> uh, so that was fun, you know. Um, but other than that, man, it, it was just, it was exciting. It was great. But I just feel so bummed because I'm seeing all these videos being posted by other people. Uh, and I missed a whole, I missed Synth Row. Yeah. And well, that's what's depressing. It's a lot of work to get video done while you're, while you're there as well as, you know, being just you and your, you and your wife, you know, it's, it could be a handful, I'm sure. Yeah. But hopefully, uh, another, one other real quick thing. Sure. My wife's badge is funny because it says producer on it. Um, and she said, what if they ask me a question? I said, well, just tell them you don't speak English. <laughs> and uh so <laughs> <laughs> that'll work yeah so i was just like you know because because mine says artist producer on it and hers said producer and she's like what if they ask me i just don't you don't speak english she's no speak english you know just, <laughs> just let it go you know yeah but anyway so yeah thank you for letting me share all that no, um, i appreciate I it it's the uh, first time i've said the first time i've talked to somebody who was there in the flesh at one of those uh conventions most of the time i'm here uh soaking up all the news articles and watching the youtube videos same so, yeah so thank yeah. you yeah. just just the stories and the experiences that you've shared with us just now are just as a uh, just as good as uh the video or in my opinion as video cool so, well, it makes me want to go you. next year <laughs> well we should go yeah we should you know it'd be really cool to meet up i mean um there's a bunch of people I wanted to meet up with, and I didn't. Uh, it just, yeah. I'll yeah, we'll, shut up. we'll make it happen. Yeah. We'll do it. We'll, cool. Mood Fest. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll get you guys out here somehow. I don't know. I definitely well, we'll see. Do I'm not going to be that far away from you after my move. So, <laughs> Mood Fest is definitely a possibility. Um, awesome. Yeah, let's. Uh, what, part, what part of Florida? Uh, be in the Tampa area, most likely. Haven't decided oh, cool. 100%. The nice thing is, is what I do for work is I can pretty much live anywhere. So it's just going to be a matter of finding a nice place in a nice area, and that's where I'll go. Well, dude, you know, you're only like, what, four hours away from me? Yeah. Not yeah. even? Yeah, probably. Mr. Cow Food, where are you from? Uh, well, I'm where Moog Fest Boog, Moog, whatever. Fest takes place. Uh, Durham, Raleigh is where I'm at. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're not that far either. <laughs> no, it's, I'm right there. Oh, yeah. this is good. So then, you know, maybe we can all go to Moog Fest. That'd be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Make a thing of there it. There it is. There it is. So anyways, folks, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about some gear now that, um, that was uh, announced at NAM this year. And the first thing I want to do is just mention, because we're going to talk about Behringer. Behringer had a huge long list of, uh, of new synths coming out. And um, I just want to give a shout out to Moot Booksley. He's been doing a bunch of demos for Behringer. I'm not sure if he's working for them directly or kind of seem like maybe he is. But uh, lots of videos on the Crave and the Odyssey and all these things. So if you guys are looking for, for some nice in-depth videos, be sure to check out his YouTube channel. Um, and let's uh, let's talk about the Behringer lineup. So, um, the first the first one mm -hmm. that is kind of new that kind of surprised everyone would be the Crave. Yes. And what the poor I, man's the poor man's mother thirty two. Yes. I've heard it. So one ninety nine, one ninety nine, yes. semi modular synthesizer. Is this a single oscillator in here? I can't remember. Yeah. It's single. So, I think it looks cool. I think it sounds pretty cool. Um, it's the Curtis oh, it's 3340, I think. 
is the oscillator in there, which is the same as the Profit Five. Right. Except remanufactured, it's not new. It's not new old stock or anything like that. It's remanufactured. When is it the same? Behringer has their, so it's got the ladder filter up. from their Behringer D, and then yeah, right. That oscillator. That's the same oscillator that they have in the Neutron, right? Uh, yeah. Hold on a second, guys. Sure. Just gonna... <laughs> so, Echo, what do you think uh, about the Crave? Um, I kind of dig it, man. Um, I, I was, I checked out, uh, Moot's video. I thought it was pretty cool. Um, one thing it did say, um, that you could actually get, was it a third oscillator, uh, with a, the way you patch it a certain way? Um, and I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, yeah, I watched a couple of his videos on it and, um, it's actually really cool. It, it I, I like the color. It kind of, I love the way. Yeah, the look of it, I think, is is really cool. That's yeah, that cool. orange and black scheme kind of reminds me of the um, the drum brute uh, impact. Okay. Um, so yeah, I was I was checking it out. That the gas meter went up a little bit on that one. That was kind of cool. Are you back, cow food? Yeah, yeah. My my lady was asking about my cat's condition. Oh, okay. So I had to take. Oh, that. that's cool. Uh, Coming back from the vet and all. But yeah, yeah. Um, back to the Crave. Uh, but I, I thought it was a pretty interesting beast. Uh, I think it's got the same sound as the Neutron oscillators. I'm not sure if they use the same oscillators on Neutron or yeah, not. I thought I had heard that, but I, I could be mistaken. I'm not going to say that's gospel, but I thought I had heard yeah, it. Yeah, I, I, I think he, ta- he talks about that. Um, or one of the guys did. Or... Actually, it might have been the dude from Behringer that actually mentions that. Yeah. Okay. From one of the ac- the actual uh, product videos. So the only thing I wish that we would see from Behringer on some of these lower uh, end synths is some digital control <laughs> for CC. Uh, because for people like me who tend to work in a DAW and produce, um, and I know you can use CV patching, but then there's a whole other mess of getting, uh, you know, CV to MIDI converters, all those things. Um, that would be my only thing. Like this, I would love this synthesizer, I think, but uh, I, I would just prefer to have uh, some digital controls on there. Right. That would be my only, my only thing. But it's two hundred bucks. But at the same time, yeah, two hundred. It's all analog. I mean, I, I have yeah. no qualms. Yeah. That exactly. I'm a, kind of a purist with that kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, it looks like um, it also looks like that's something that they'll be able to get out there a lot faster than some of the other stuff that they had mentioned. Yes, um, I think it's uh, at the, it said. Oh, they didn't give a date yet, though, did they? No, I will tell you this: um, it is not on Sweetwater's site. But you know what is on Sweetwater's site? What's that? And you're going to get to that, but that's the Volcorder, and right. JJ's gas meter is way up on that one. (laughs) (laughs) So it's the VC340, and that's on the Sweetwater site? Mr. Cow Foods, right. I I, I lied. Because when that was announced, man, I was like, ooh, 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 ooh. ooh." Drum machines and vocoders. I don't know what it is. That's the coolest, man. And Plus, that's well, a string machine. That's too. a string synth, yeah. It's yeah. a yeah. string synth. And so, why not have one of those in your arsenal? I mean, exactly. And they, they were talking $899, $900, maybe 1000 actually, not too long ago. And the price they're asking was 599 now. 599 makes it really, really gassy. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's, I, uh, that's on my short list too. What's the Waldorf one that we I don't think is still even out yet? That was kind of a isn't that kind of a similar product? Uh, the, 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 yeah. The strike. Fed? Forget the name of. It. Am I remembering that right? It's been such it's a long time. Based on the strike, it's based on the strike that is is beefed up and it has a vocoder. And it's got a vocoder. And I can't remember what but it's called. They, I don't think they ever. <laughs> Ever got around to making it? They announced it, but I don't know if it's ever going to be released. That that would be the only other product that'd be kind of in that category. But if Baron, if the Behringer is going to be six hundred bucks, and I've heard some demos, um, 
can't remember the guy. There's a guy on YouTube who has a couple really good demos. Mr. That. Firechild. Yes, that's one. the one. Yep. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, I'm on Waldorf's site right now. I don't. I can't remember what that thing was called, but uh, they they had. I don't see it. They had a string machine vocoder combo coming out. Oh no! Here it is. The STVC. That's it. There we go. Yeah, string synthesizer with vocoder. Actually, looks pretty dope. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's on their site. It's under one of their products, so. Uh, maybe, maybe we'll next see. Year. Maybe we'll see it eventually. I mean, it did take them quite a while to get the quantums out. So, yeah. and they don't have distribution here. <laughs> uh, they well, they do, but it's through Korg. It's not them directly. So. Which is really weird, huh? I, I yeah, I don't know. Maybe they don't. Uh, I I. I I've never bought Waldorf gear until now, so I I can't really say. But one thing I can say is that Waldorf was one of the companies I had no idea they even made synthesizers for a very long time when I got into this. So because they have well, like, that's they don't have a presence really. Well, I will tell you, um, I did. I had a chance to uh, cruise by because I was in the Korg area, um, and right outside of that was this little cove. And that's where some of the Waldorf stuff was. Um, I wanted to, to play the um, the Quantum. And again, there was somebody sitting on there. There was a comedian at the Tech Awards that was hilarious. And he said, could somebody please tell these guys that come to the NAMM show to stop writing their next masterpiece on the demo machines and let other people have a try? <laughs> um, so I... I <laughs> Because I just found that hilarious because that's exactly what happened to me twice. So I didn't have a chance to play the Quantum <laughs> or the Kyra. That's funny because it's true. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because they're like sitting there like writing the, the Ninth Symphony on, you know, on these, these synths, you know. Uh, <laughs> take, take a few so, minutes, but come on. Yeah, yeah. And know, there's so, so many people there. It's not like they can have a truckload of synths. You know. uh, the guy, the guy on the on the 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 micro freak. I'm telling you, my wife was even looking at me like, "What is up?" With, he was like going ham on the thing. I'm like, "Bro, <laughs> come on, you know." Sure, you sure it wasn't sync. <laughs> no, no, he literally, he was this little Asian dude, and he was just going to town, man. And I'm like, "Come on, man," you know. <laughs> so, but anyway. Well, anyway, let's talk about the MS101. Yeah, let's do that. So that's gonna be two ninety nine, guys. Seems, that seems to be Behringer's uh, price point there, and this this I thought would definitely be more than two ninety nine. There's a lot more, you know, even just the hardware, the case, and everything, all the sliders. It's a lot bigger than like the Behringer D or the Crave, right? So I think that's well, yeah, because. Surprising. It's actually the actual size, isn't it, of a, of a yeah. SHL 101? I think it might be even bigger. Is it a little bigger? It might be. Those keys look pretty big on it compared to an actual 101. Well, I'll have to wait till we see them. I'm sure Not somebody will get bigger, one but side bigger. by side it. So you it guys, looks nice. Do you guys remember when we were talking about how, well, I don't know if this probably predates when we started doing shows together, but uh, the when... We were talking like maybe this was a troll because Behringer had announced it on like 808 day or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. but here it is, a nice bright red one. Yeah, and like I said, I know um, Ken Flux from Flux with it. He has one, um, and um, he has one of these. Yeah. Oh wow. Well, he also just today just announced that he also has a uh, has an 808 by them. Oh. Cool. Um, they just sent oh. him, sent it to him too, and it isn't for promotion. It was strictly for him being a beta tester. I don't know how these guys become beta testers. I I don't get it. I don't know. You gotta be super cool, man. Send me some shit, someone. <laughs> well, yeah. What happens if they sent you a bag of shit? A bag of shit, right? Yeah. yeah. Here you go. No, no, send me <laughs> equipment, someone. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, the RD eight hundred eight that was there again. Is this? Did they actually announce a release for this? I don't think they have. I no. Think, I think this is still like it's it's it looks like it's getting really close, but they still haven't committed to a release date. Uh, but we did find out the price at two ninety nine. Yes. 
So again, not bad. You could buy all of Behringer's uh, latest gear pretty much for under a thousand bucks. Seems like. Which is nuts, isn't it? Yeah, because then, then not only that, then they have the Odyssey. Did I pull up an Odyssey? So Sweetwater's price is uh, three twenty nine ninety nine for for, for the uh, the MS one hundred one. <coughs> oh, okay. Yeah, everything's like thirty bucks more for some reason at Sweetwater. I don't know why. Uh, from what I understand, from what I heard, was the tariff stuff. Yeah. Uh, the tariffs. Oh, Cause politics. China, yeah. Tariffs. Okay. Because uh, the, <laughs> yeah. uh, right? Because the, uh, oh, God. Because the new China. All right. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to bring it up. Oh, I don't give a <laughs> shit, bro. Trust <laughs> 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 um, me. Yeah, because the Neutron's the same and the Model D is the 329. Okay. Well, that makes sense. And even that markup's not too bad. No. Yeah, I mean, it's already a pretty inexpensive, uh, you know, anyway in terms of price um yeah but sound wise there's tax sorry <laughs> it's okay Polish. it's okay so but had what do you guys think because i've never owned an sh-101 so i don't really know what to expect here um either of you guys I owned? Played. yeah i've had I, one. I never had one i played one. Oh, there do there, you that's think my it's my favorite monosynth of all time um, I yeah, so you said that. I never sold it. So you it. said that last time too. Did I? <laughs> I remember you saying that. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's true. So I have a I have a modular. It's an Intelligel Atlantis, which is based on the you know, 101. <laughs> Sounds pretty damn close. And the 01A from Roland Boutique. That's one of only two boutiques that I own from them. But I, I have this, a question. I'm not sure. When Go are we going to see your studio, man? <laughs> soon very soon I've, i'm just still <laughs> getting called out right now everything <laughs> i hear about all this gear and i don't see it i'm just you know i'm curious i can, I can pull it out and show it to I'm you but <laughs> it's here whoa <laughs> yeah i'm okay. sorry <laughs> hey it's, it's all right here we're talking it's about. all it's all right it's all right i'm just giving you a hot time man <laughs> it's all good. so sound wise uh cow food yeah, from the uh, from the demos you've heard, how close do you think the uh, the Behringer MS one hundred and one is to? Uh... It's hard to tell because it seems like a lot of the demos that I've heard from it uh, don't go into the the stuff that I know my one hundred and one from. Uh, um, it's just a lot of noise uh, that they seem to put on it for some reason <laughs> in the demos, and um, they're checking out the. Uh, the extra waveform that comes with that one and uh some of the fm so the jury's it's, still out in your mind on this yeah yeah the jury's because, still out as far as getting it close it's that i can hear moments where it's actually better sounding than an 01a mm -hmm. and closer to the 101 and then there's other moments where i'm like no that's not a 101 so it kind of reminds me a little bit of when the behringer d was announced and we'd hear demos and it didn't sound anything like a Moog model d <laughs> So, but uh, as soon as I got one of those and was able to match it up, I was like, yeah, yeah, that's pretty close. So, so, do, do, well, Mr. Kaufu, do you actually have, do you have one? Do you have the, um, the boutique version? Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'm going to go grab it right now. <laughs> just because. <laughs> I go grab you know, one. Get <laughs> <laughs> uh, my headphones. Uh, he's mad at me now. <laughs> It's all right. Sometimes it's not all about the flash. All Sorry, right, dude. The bling. Here it is. It's the blue. Oh, the blue one. Blue oh, you got the blue one. Oh, I like that. Yeah. With the uh, little keyboard add-on. So. <laughs> nice. Yes. Yeah, what's the question that you had about it? No, I just want to know. Do you think that that comes close to the real one that you actually owned? It does. In It's certain... It's certain frequencies. Other frequencies, no, not as much. It's got a little bit of aliasing on the top end. Um, and the filter is just, just ever so slightly off yeah. from the original. And, and that's, that's got to be tough. That sounds, 
like and it just it's just a little bit of warble in the other one i mean the old one the original and this one doesn't quite get there the lfo is maybe just a little bit too tight on this right. one as well so the modulation just is there's just little tiny subtle differences but overall this is pretty damn close this is as close as it gets other than what i just mentioned which was the atlantis intelligel or intelligel atlantis modular so you have a pretty decent modular setup then yeah and that's a semi-modular so you might actually dig that if you get a skiff and go with the intelligel uh atlantis that'll get you a 101 really that'll get you a 101 on steroids It'd be like if you've ever heard of the Devilfish mod for the 303. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That thing's awesome. Okay. So think of a 101 having a Devilfish mod. That's what the Intelligent Atlantis is. That sounds awesome. So, <laughs> it, right? Oh, oh I, I got, got it right, right here. here. I mean, I really look, wanna, up. look up Intelligent Atlantis and look up, like, within the last month, there's a um, Aphex, there's, there's a video called Aphex Scale. <laughs> Put out by Intelligel, and it sounds exactly like the song Polynomial C. If you if you're familiar with that, yeah, it's dead on. It's the it's exact sound of that. That's that's cool. It's, it's only six ninety nine. It, yeah, it's expensive. Am I looking at the right one here, Cal Food? Should I get a should I just get original one hundred and one, or should I buy this? This thing, you know, my right, yeah. Do I have the right one pulled up on the? Yeah, that's that's it. That's the one. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah, that looks awesome. See, I'm learning stuff I didn't even know about. I didn't even know about this. Here, I'll I... tell you what. I'll show you my skiff since we're all on the gear stuff here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is like as far as I went with Euro Rack, by the way, and I think that's that's called a happy ending kit for the for the rack. But this, forgive my camera. Here, let me get you in the. Oh, look at that. Oh, cool. All right, let me move it back. So this wow. is this is my skiff. This is all of it. Well, it's hard yep. for me to see. You're, yeah, yeah, you're there. Awesome. It's got a disting. Uh, this this over here. Oh, wait, other way. This here is the uh, Metropolis, which is a sequencer, eight-step. And, of course, the Atlantis. The black thing. The, is, this is the utility. The, the Atlantis doesn't have... Um, a sequencer and it just that way you 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 bought that one or yeah it does not have a sequencer it's you you have to use a mini to cv gate to run it or just a cv gate sequencer of your own so like, cool. let's say you have a, a bsp or something you could run it from that or if you have the arterial key step you can use that to control it too oh that's very cool so yeah <laughs> cables all over the place see i just i just learned something yeah, and we got to see some of Cow Foods gear. Maybe we got to get back into modular. It's not that bad. I mean, I'm telling you, that that little setup is about, you know, it's about $1,300 to get that set up. Well, I mean, yeah, if you know what you're buying, like I really, I I bought the um, the um, Pittsburgh um, Pittsburgh modular stuff, I, I, and I liked it. I thought it was cool, but it was just, it was just too time consuming. Like you. Just showed me some stuff that I didn't even know existed. I, I because there's so many modules out there to buy. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah. know, you get overwhelmed. You know what I mean? Um, this mm -hmm. this is cool. Like this is yeah, simple. That's yeah. just simple, straightforward. There's no frills about it, and uh, that's basically a one on one for thirteen hundred dollars. May as well you can buy one for thirteen hundred dollars. I was just gonna say, how much is a vintage one? Japan. <laughs> so that's that's well, gonna, a yeah. one in, in a euro rack. <laughs> yeah, but that's cool. There you go. All right, now now you got me looking at modules again. <laughs> <laughs> the rabbit hole. Go down Next. that rabbit hole. There's Metropolis right there. That's 580. And there's know, all man. kinds of demos on both. I don't know. Of those. You, you, you can look through demos for days on both of just those two modules. You can pick up a vintage uh, 101 on Reverb for. As low as eight seventy five. That one's probably oh, really. Dude, yeah, let's get a tip top, uh, tip top audio skiff for one seventy five. Oh. Look at that. It's even got it sitting in a plush. Uh, I don't know if that's a couch. Like, what is that? Oh, that's that. Isn't that that eighties looking rug? I don't know. It looks like a stuffed animal. 
Where is that shipping from anyway? That's a lot of money to ship. Oh, Jeez. that's true. Is that how they're? Oh, it's from Japan. I always see the <laughs> there you the, go. the sellers from Japan always charge like three hundred dollars for shipping. <laughs> uh, yeah, I didn't notice that. Yep, good point. So that would put it on par with about everything else on the site, at least on Reverb. So anyway, right, yeah, that got, got me thinking. Well, oh, got that gas, gas going. is burning. <laughs> you saw some of this stuff in my studio. Yeah, I, I can get you gassing, dude. Uh, Did we see? You don't want to see my studio. That's the problem. You just don't want to see it. Yes, I, we do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you do. Did we see the Pro One at Nam? No, uh, I like I said, uh, Behringer was uh, in LA at the pre Nam booth. Oh, that's right. It wasn't. A- there wasn't a booth at uh, the NAM Convention Center, unfortunately. Gotcha. I know there's a lot of people excited for this one. Um, See, I'm not. I don't know yeah, why. Yeah, I mean, uh, it sounds pretty good from the demos I've heard. Um, and I've had a Pro One, a couple of them. You did? Actually, really? Today. You had? Wow. I've had a couple of Pro Ones. <laughs> yeah. That, my old studio is all sold off, but yeah. And I've heard the demos on it. It sounds pretty good. And you'd be surprised at the, what you can do with a Pro One. And so I'm curious to see what more we can get from that one. It doesn't. It's not showing up on the radar right now. But once the, we start seeing some demos, we'll. I think we'll see people get more and more interested in it. Yeah. No, and the Pro, the Pro One is, um, is mono, right? It's not polyphonic, right? No. It's yeah. not, but maybe they maybe they paraphonic that one. I don't know. I mean, this is Behringer we're talking about, so true. Uh, yeah. That said, uh, it's got two oscillators, and you can really, really do some stuff with those. Yeah. So, and the look of it, I, I like. I like the look of this. And again, it's two ninety nine. It looks exactly like a Pro One. Yes, it does. Yep. Minus Definitely. the keyboard. Yep. And the CV on top here. And, and minus that too, he has a yeah, lot of extra just, stuff there. I just called up a picture of a Pro One and that unit, and you're right, it looks exactly like it. That's yep. kind of cool. And it sounds like it's gonna sound like it too, which is kind of the main, the main thing. So yeah, so that was just Behringer. We haven't even gotten into some. But the other before stuff. we get off the Behringer trip, you said that there were people that were checking out the UBXA. There's actually a um, prototype out. There was uh, the video that I saw, and I'm looking at it right here, um, is the UBX. Uh, they had one there, but I don't know if it was working or not. It was just sitting there. Huh. Um, that was okay. the video that I saw, and that was actually a Behringer video. So it's, I believe it's on their site, and it's on YouTube. Um, it's got to be a shell. There's no way that – maybe they do, but, I mean, I could not imagine well, they have, having a working prototype. They been working on it for a while, but who knows how far along they are. Yeah, well, that's, wait, that's, maybe they do because they did show the PCBs. I saw pictures of those on yeah. uh, gear sluts. That's what so I'm maybe we'll yeah, hear a demo exactly. soon. <laughs> if you hear it, that would be nice. Make that's me feel something that I'm very yeah, regret. That, that's, Buyers regret for my OB6. <laughs> that, uh, now, do we think? Do we think it's going to be oh. DeepMind 12 pricing for one of those? Yeah. Uh, probably a thousand is my guess. Yeah, uh, maybe less. Somewhere between eight hundred and a thousand is my guess. Yeah, that's, that seems about right. I hope they nail the sound on that. I will. Uh, that that one I'll be snatching up for sure if it sounds. I'm. I'm gonna say five ninety. Like I hope it will. Five ninety nine. If it's five ninety nine, then we're all getting one. Yeah, we'll all have. It's, we'll it's all. Not uh, really gonna be a question. We'll all show up on a on a show going. Look at all our. UBXA. Look at our UBXA. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, I, I, that's definitely something that uh, I, I'm very interested in. Yeah. And everybody is. Yeah. Yeah. That one in the vote quarter. Yeah. Yes. Ah, so oh. are we done with Behringer? I am. For now. I think so. Until they have some more news, which uh, they've been really good with their, uh, their uh, marketing. Using a lot of social media, and uh, I'm really impressed with the way they've uh, they've been able to. Well, are they act- are they one more? I just sorry, I didn't interrupt. Just one more thing. Are they actually doing the RD nine hundred nine? 
Yeah, I was going to ask that too. Yes. Uh, well, you know, actually, that, I don't know that that's shown up since um, NomCon. When I was at NomCon, they had a shell of of the case. Um, and we're looking for suggestions on features to add and things like that. So it's in the works. And actually, uh, I, I kind of prefer the 909 over the 808 anyway, but um, I, I'd like to see that. But uh, I don't know that there's any new news on that at the moment. Right, right. That looks nice. The, the 909 is actually, some of it is sample-based. Right. So I prefer the 808. Just because I'm, you know, well, you're, an you're analog you're, snob. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's there's certain <laughs> sounds in the 808 that I like, but I really like uh, like the clap and the snares from the 909. Um, that's, but you know, that's because I make trance music and I like acid go. house and stuff like that, and those are all 909 driven type uh, tracks. So anyway, um, yeah. True. So we've got. Uh, let me find Arturia. We were just talking about this a little bit with Cal Foods experience there, trying to stand in line, and some guy wouldn't let him have it, and then he got a broken one. Uh, this that is wasn't the, me. That was Echo. Uh, I'm sorry. I meant Echo. Apologies. So it's the Micro Ooh, Freak. Right. Yes. This, uh, this was probably the most interesting-looking synthesizer that I've seen in a while. And I thought the sound demos that I had seen through on YouTube sounded really cool. What do you guys have to say about that? Well, I uh, because I didn't get a chance to actually <laughs> physically play it, I uh, ended up doing some research on YouTube um, and listening to some of the stuff. Um, Sonic State actually had a no talking uh, hands on demo. Um, I it's interesting and it's it it does some funky things because it's both digital and analog. Um, the touch plate reminds me a lot of the Wasp. I uh, wish, I wish you would have gotten to play one because I I would be very interested to hear what what you would have to say about how that that interface is to use. I, I well I'll be honest with you the feel of it it was kind of cool because uh, it, it's got like this raised like. Uh, metal paint that they have on there, mm -hmm. um, so it feels kind of funky, and but it feels cool. Again, it's Artoria, so all the knobs felt really good, you know. Um, yeah. Solid and the little quality. screen, yeah, it really is. Yeah. Uh, it's very light, which I was surprised uh, having a metal keyboard. Um, but I, from what I heard, even on Sonic State's demo, I, I didn't go. I gotta run out and get one of these. Um, I yeah, that's I kind of there's a there's a lot of synths that I have in my studio that already sound like that. I kind of I I kind of feel what you're where you're getting at, and it was. I just I think I need to hear some more, see some more demos before I, I'm able to make a call on it myself as well. But uh, I thought it looked really cool. I thought it sounded really good, but it didn't get my gas meter filling up super high. I just thought it was kind of cool. What, did, what about yeah. you, Cal Food? Nah. Nah. <laughs> Cal Food I, like the I like the interface on it, but the, the I, what I kind of get the sense of is that they were trying to make a modular system out of this little keyboard. And right. I, I kind of dig that touch-sensitive keyboard. That's cool, but it goes so far. And that's but gonna be... what I like is the state variable filter, and I like the uh, mod matrix on it. So it might that, those might be redeeming factors. That yeah, and I can attest the the state variable matrix. filter uh, that they have on the matrix brute is really good. So that, that's awesome. Yeah, and if he, well, if you can run external audio in through that thing, that might make it worth its price or admission. Yeah. on that on that filter alone. Well, it's not, it's not too much money. It's three three forty nine. You know that's that's in the uh, budget range, and um, yeah, there's no input on it. There is no audio input on it. No. What? Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> okay, okay, never but, mind. As gas meter so went from yes, yeah, all the way we down. Got, we got CV, uh, gate, and pressure, and which is probably like a foot control. 
And then we've got uh, clock in, clock out, and then MIDI in, MIDI out with with mini, mini jacks. It's the mini jack ones, not the actual MIDI ones. Yeah. Uh, USB, on off switch, and the uh, output and the and the uh, power supply, and that's it. Yeah. If, if I bought one of those, I would just be like, why in the fuck did they not put a goddamn audio input? I mean, it's got a nice analog state variable filter on there. Yeah. <laughs> why? <laughs> I want to use yeah, this on like an on odd. my drums, on my other synths, on my why? Yeah, dude, there's like I even no. on the front panel is nothing. So, oh well. Uh, it does have a 64 step sequencer, though. Does that make you any happier, Calfood? It it does have that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. Now, I'm just giving you a hard one time. of the things I thought was interesting. Um, if you look at the top here of the keyboard, right above that is this kind of like uh, these, these like, I want to say sideways sawtooth uh, waveforms. Yeah. Uh, I believe that's some type of ribbon controller. Yeah, that's what I heard. That's Which I is kind of cool. I saw from that. Um, again, I I need to sit. I, I want to hopefully maybe friggin' uh, look. It's on B and H for two ninety nine. I guess yeah, the, the big selling thing on that, from what I saw, was the dice button, where you just hit the dice button and it randomizes your sequence in the key that you're working in. Which oh. is kind of interesting. And changes the gate lengths as well. So you can get different note lengths and sequence within the same key. Oh, like can't. if Guitar Center actually get one in, I'd like to sit down and play with it. Well, hopefully they'd get something like this in there. These don't take up that much floor space and aren't like a flagship. So hopefully... Well, you know, it's guitar. Center. I know, I know. Trust me. The ones, the, there's two of them down in my neck of the woods now, and they never have shit. So, so I guess to to revamp, I don't, I wouldn't buy it because of the filter. In there's no audio input filtering, so that for me kills it. But on the other hand, the sequencer having the functions that it does have with it and the ribbon controller, yeah, makes it a great sequencer slash controller for say. A modular or something like a semi-modular or anything with CV gate. That's true. Yeah, yeah. It could it could then stand on its own as its own kind of like. I think that's been said uh, as a sequencer to do those types of things, and as a controller for that that type of system. A great controller. Yeah, yeah. System. I can see that. I concur. <laughs> cool. So let's talk about. We talked about this a little bit. Uh, and Cal Foods, uh, or not Cal Food. Well, I keep I keep calling Echo Craft Cal Food. Sorry about that. That's all right. uh, we can switch our heads. If you <laughs> yeah, let's, let's do it. Do a head swap. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so the the um, the Mini Log XD. I, we we can't touch on this quite a bit already, but I I think I've got gas for this. I was on the verge of getting a pro or a uh, Pro Log. Until I ended up getting a Moog One, uh, but this being offered with the uh, the digital oscillator and the like, it just seems like a better package for for what what this is. And I've got gas for this, I think. The price point's not bad at all, man. Yeah, six nineteen. Yeah, that's definitely. Yeah. I'm look. I'm looking again at the uh, the oscilloscope. It's definitely bigger. And I think I think that. One thing that this is going to help, because the the, pri the barrier to entry for that, that <coughs> multi-engine, the digital oscillator that can be programmed in the effects, is going to hopefully help drive some innovation with that aspect yes. of this, uh, just because it's at, it's offered now at uh, a much lower price to get that feature. So I'm hoping that we'll see quite a bit of development with that, and it'll be really interesting to see where that goes. I agree. Cal food, you gonna get one? No, no. I have a mini log and a monologue, so for me, it's you're just all logged out. Oscillator, it's just an oscillator I'm adding to the, the equation. Yeah, and see for and me, I've got I, those in spades. So I do have a monologue, um, but I never got the mini log. Yeah, I've got both yeah. of them. So I like the monologue. I think it's cool. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, and I, don't I think know. it's a highly underrated synth for what it is. Yeah, totally. And I don't know if it's worth uh, upgrading for this, but they did say that they're going to lower the price of the monologue, and they're going to keep making that alongside the XD. So that's kind of interesting. 
So are they getting rid of the mini log? No, nope, they're still going to make it. They're just going to reduce the price slightly on it. I can't remember what they had said. I'd seen a video about it, and I should have. They're, they're, they're not going to reduce the price of the monolog. They'll, they'll do it for the mini log. <laughs> the mini log. Sure. Excuse me. Did I say the wrong but, thing again? Yeah. Crazy yeah. right now. <laughs> it's like it's what happens when you don't sleep. That's okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, okay. Well, I've got gas for it. I think um, you know, I may end up snagging one of those a little later this year. Um, and then the other, the Volcas, I've kind of like... Uh, I'm not really big into the Volcas these days, so I I don't really have gas for those. What, do you guys have gas for either of those? The new ones? Uh, I, the only thing I'm I, I'm curious about is um, the drum, the Volca drum. Yeah, that's about it. And modular for me. <laughs> really? Yeah, I'm actually curious about. But the only thing that I'm sort of hesitant about is that it's got only, I think it's a triangle core. For its uh, yes. carrier and modulator, you are correct as they, as they are calling them. Yeah. So that kind of limits the timbrality, and the zero coast is just a little bump up in price from it. I think I would probably, be, I would be better off with probably a zero coast if I want to. The go. zero, the zero coast is a beast, man. I've watched videos on that thing, and it's awesome. You know, I just, I would probably do that. Yeah, that's that's what I'm thinking. If I'm going to go that west coast. Bukla sound. If I want yeah. that, that's that's what I'm gonna do. So cool. So this one I'm gonna throw in here because we didn't mention this in, when we were getting ready for the show. But this I, I remembered this after we were kind of talking a little bit. The Moog Siren. Ooh, I forgot about that. Yeah. So yeah. this um, is kind of a uh, like a revised uh, Minotaur. It's a Minotaur with with, uh, with higher range on the oscillators yes. and the colorful paint scheme, and it has a and bird. Make it, it look like a grandmother. Yeah. Yep. Well, or kind of like a Moog source a little bit with the yes, the the silver and yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Loop Pop has a great video all about it and explains the how it's similar to the Minotaur. And, what you're getting is a difference. So, and the Minotaur was based on the Taurus, right? If I remember yes. right. Yeah, I believe that's right. I used, to, I used to have one of those the Taurus pedals. Yeah. Excuse, excuse me, with my you know toilet paper here. Oh, what the hell are you doing? Are you gonna wipe your ass on? on the no, table? dude, I'm not. I, it's, <laughs> I, I ran out of. I, Jesus, <laughs> I ran out of. I just yeah, see I'm, you I'm, over there with a the big old toilet. paper. I'm actually sitting in the John right now yeah, doing this podcast. It's actually on the shitter. <laughs> God. <laughs> oh my God. No, I ran out of I ran out of tissue paper and I'm so sick right now, so I, I gotta blow my nose again. Sorry. So they, they had said something about only twenty five hundred of these being produced. And uh, I see that here, but then I had also seen that there's some still available in certain areas of the world to buy I'm, I'm not sure what's going on with that you guys have you guys heard anything about that no i saw some there uh, vincent king i think had some for sale that they're waiting on some more i don't know okay i really don't know i'm not really limited run i really don't have gas for this i think it's cool and everything um but it's not i don't really need that at all so no i'd, I'd rather buy an o-coast <laughs> there you go <laughs> I'm, I'm you know what Echo Craft's getting next. See, yeah. see all the gas I can give you. This, yeah, it's, this is bad. That's why he wants to see your your uh, your setup there, so you can yeah, man, start copying it, buy everything. Uh, well, you know, it's, I saw your 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 uh, studio tour, and you had a Venom. I do. I, I have I, a Venom. I sold my Venom, and I immediately went on to Reverb after I watched your video, and I'm like, ooh, there's one for one ninety nine. Hmm. Well, Should I buy it back? I bought that for a hundred and twenty-five bucks or hundred and fifty bucks on eBay a while ago. Complete. I sold everything in the box. That was one of those scents that, like, when it came out, it was. I was super excited. I remember Nick Bad doing all these <laughs> reviews on it, and I was like, "This thing looks yep. cool," you know. And then it was like six hundred dollars, <laughs> and they never yeah, was, they never finished the software. They never did really finish the software with it 
and it had some of the worst aliasing I've ever heard on a synth. But anyway, yeah, I, I, uh, I, it was three ninety nine when I bought it, and I sold it for one twenty five. Well, you, you still didn't lose your ass as much as I did. I bought it almost right away <laughs> when they first came $600. out. Six hundred dollars. Yes, and then the guy that designed it, I think, was the guy that from wasn't he from Elisis? I can't yeah. remember his name. Yeah, and so I was like, "Wow, this is cool!" And they crammed all these different. Uh, the the one thing it does do well is the drum <laughs> kits. I think the drum kits in it are are, are really cool. But uh, drum kits are cool. It's it had a really dirty, uh, real for bass lines. It was very dirty and nasty sounding. That's why I bought it. Yes. Um, yeah, that, the guy that is who, true. Who, designed it was the guy who designed the andromeda yes and how how he designed that thing i i don't know (laughs) i think it was was alien it was like it was such a disappointment to me but anyway it's i I bought i bought that because i want to do some some things with it on the channel and stuff and give it another go it's been what like 10 years something like that maybe longer jesus it has huh yes it's been a long time and uh yeah anyway so how about the cura yes did you guys uh, see any demos of that well you were at the show echo you didn't get a chance to to see this did you no because there was another guy that was standing there for like you know 30 minutes Again. writing his entire symphony on it right so I, you know <laughs> the writing writing the next big hit you know um <laughs> i don't i don't get these fucking people man it's like <laughs> when i go to a show if i demo something I play with it for maybe five minutes and then I'm good. You know what I mean? Cause I, I, you know, cause you got other people like looking over your shoulder, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, you know, that's, that's actually right from the show, that picture. Yeah. So this is from GearNews.com. Uh, we're borrowing their picture for the show here, but, uh, this is, this is basically what a TI three, uh, would be. And I think, uh, cow food, you had a cool name that they shouldn't maybe come up well, with for this. I, I should not take, Credit for this, I saw it on Gear Slicks or a YouTube video. So I'm gonna call it a walrus. <laughs> Take the virus and mix it with with you know, Waldorf. Waldorf. Yeah. the walrus. Yeah. The walrus. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> that would have been cool. The Kira, I think, is a cool name. Anyway, this was um, originally uh, pitched some time ago at Music Mess, I believe, a couple, like maybe a year and a half, two years ago, um, and. It was an independent developer who was working on this, and it was called the Valkyrie at the time. And yeah, that's right. At some point, Waldorf was able to snatch this up and help bring it to market. And actually, here's a picture of what it originally looked like. For anyone interested, that's very, very, Which, very virus-looking. That looks uh, almost say, exactly looks like. like them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, uh, I like the improvements that they made. I really like actually how they've. Uh, this looks like it's got quite a bit of space, like uh, for a desktop unit. <coughs> lots of knobs, lots of buttons. Those are all good things. It's FPGA. Um, this has definitely got my gas meter up here somewhere, and uh, I'd like to get a hold of one of these eventually. What are we looking at for a price on that? Because I can't. They find haven't. It. They haven't announced it. I remember them saying when this was still kind of being talked about early days, like sub two grand, like. 1800 something like that wow. but nothing official has been yeah, said so heard to around yeah. 2000 yep yeah. which seems reasonable well, i always wanted a virus keyboard that is <laughs> not an actual I have, virus i already have a virus now that's why i have toilet paper in my studio but that's beside the point <laughs> uh <laughs> You got you got you got something from uh, from over at Nam. You got the Nam. What do they call that? The Nam sickness or something? It's like a thing. No, I I, that I have t- what's called the uh, I have the I have the well we I shouldn't say where I work, but anyway, uh, where I work, it's like a petri dish. That's what we call it. It's like the plague. Um, you know, somebody sneezes the wrong way and everybody's infested. So that's I caught that, and let me tell you, today was brutal. I feel a little bit better, but. I called up today and told him I'm not coming in tomorrow either. So uh, I just need to sleep, man. I won't mention sleep to you, Marshall, because yeah, I know you need sleep. I'm running on fumes. I was up all last night working on a 3D video of this studio for you guys. That will be coming out soon. But anyway, cool. um, that's what you call dedication, man. You know, 
Yes. Yeah. Uh, but while we're on the topic of Waldorf, um, I just wanted to mention that uh, they have released an update to the Quantum already. This is actually, they, they've had a few. I think they've had one or two since I've had mine. And this this one is kind of a big deal. It's a it's a 2.0 2 release. It's going to add a whole other synthesis engine, uh, which, from what I understand, is going to basically allow you to take a single oscillator and have it function almost like an independent synth. So with th three oscillators or whatever you have on there, you could get, like, I, I don't know how to explain that, really. It's crazy. But, That's uh, cool, though. Yeah. And... God, hmm. what a cool synthesizer! That's that's. I'm definitely super pleased with uh, picking that up. The quantum that is, but that was yeah, kind of I, a a NAM I really announcement. Really wanted to play with that. Well, we'll get you doing the. Uh, we've got some plans going, and we're gonna have some remote studio sessions, and you'll be able to play one at that point for sure. I just looked up an Access Virus uh, TI2 desktop. Arriving soon, 1999, only 600, are you ready? For the, it's the number of the beast, $666.33 a month. <laughs> it's the beast. That's it. I, it's it, so affordable. Yeah, $666 <laughs> plus your soul. But uh, you have a virus, Marshall, right? I do. I have a TI2. This is probably the... I think this is the second one I've had. I had a full uh, 61 key TI2 at one point that I got rid of because I didn't like the keyboard. I don't know. Like, it was too big. And so I got the desktop unit, and I really like the thing that's the coolest thing about the TI2 is that the, the TI software, I really love that because I don't even have to touch this thing. I can use it like a plug-in. It'll stream three, channel, uh, three stereo channels of audio via USB. Plus, it's got six independent outputs uh, for analog out. You can do 16-part multi-timbral, and it's like 128 voice. So it's still like a super awesome uh, synthesizer on paper. It's definitely older now, uh, but they've still uh, they still pushed updates, and I think it's got like some new wavetables and stuff like that that were in the last um, the last update. But uh, I'm just, I'm just shocked that they still make this thing and they're still selling it. I think people are still buying them. Must be. I mean, otherwise, why, yeah. why why keep making them? They're super expensive. I know they sound amazing. I've always wanted one, but they're just, they used to really was beyond my price range back in the day. Yeah. Same same with me. I would always heard that, like, the virus is what you need, uh, you know, back when I started making electronic dance music. And it was always like, oh, my God, it's like, I think it was almost like three grand for one of them back then. I yeah, think well, I, I'm looking at, I'm looking at one now. It's two twenty nine fifteen. Yeah. So, and I started with. I remember I got a Virus A, and that was a pretty cool little synth. But it was it was super old, you know, and wasn't as powerful. And but I had some fun with it. And but I, again, I think that the reason why the Virus Ti two and the Ti one kind of stuck around. Well, obviously the Ti one's not in production anymore, but the the Ti two <laughs> is still being made. Ten, like over ten years later, is because of all the uh, all the features and everything that's still relevant today. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And yeah. it'd be interesting to see how the Cura stacks up to one of those. Yeah. Um, so, anyway. Yeah, if we ever get a chance to play one. Right. <laughs> yep. Someday. Someday. Uh, let's see what else is on the list here. We got the model sampler from Electron. Now this, um, I don't did not do my homework on this. So can one of you guys please tell me what this is and why I should buy one? It's a six track uh, sampler, and if you want to do uh, drum and bass type sounds uh, in a live situation. It's got all hands-on control with all the knobs to manipulate the sounds and the sequence in ways that are sonically pleasing, I guess. And it's an entry level. Uh, it's, it's a good <coughs> foot in, I guess, if you want to get into the whole electron thing without going, full how the hell do I figure this out? So it's not, you're not it's, going it's full, kind of full on electron. This is like right. this is like the baby step into the into the exactly. whirlpool of electron. 
So how much is this thing? Four hundred and forty nine dollars looks like. Yeah, it's on uh, Sweetwater's got it for three ninety nine. Six track sample based groove box, cool. Yeah. Well, it looks I don't like the way this thing looks at all, honestly, I'm not gonna lie. I just don't like this looks like Yeah, it's ugly. It is I agree. ugly. Well that's um, why they give you the stickers. Yeah, to make it even more ugly. <laughs> <laughs> so you forget about how ugly it was originally, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, anyway, exactly. I'm, be, I'm being mean. mean. It's about but, the sound, though. I mean, yeah, exactly. I the, if the functionality is there and this thing is built pretty well, <laughs> uh, I've never owned any Electron gear, so I can't really say anything about their build quality. Oh, um, I had a SID station. Yeah. Don't, don't make me cry. <laughs> but uh, how do I put it? If you already have Electron gear, I mean, if you've got an Oxtrack, Digitac, Digitone, any of that, you're probably not going to have too much interest in this no. device because any one of their sampler base, I mean, even the rhythm, um, you're going to have all that in spades. Uh, I guess the only difference is that it has touch and velocity sensitive pads. Oh, the, so, the, the, ri the rhythm. How do you say that? Rhythm? Rhythm. That one does too, actually. So, but the, the sample module. Oh, like the DigiTact? Model. Uh, does yeah the DigiTac does not have you said that. it right. What's that? You said it right. DigiTac. I? I would prefer to say a DigiTac, oh, Digi but I understand they're Swedish and they want us to say a DigiTac. So that's how I'll say it. Well, I yeah, I it, mean, it, go ahead. No, go ahead. Finish. Oh, I was just going to say that the touch touch us the touch sensitive pads on the this new Electron are is really the big difference and the uh, more knobs per function than you will get with the other ones yeah uh so that's interesting and it's it's quite a bit it's like this, a backup digitag it's a backup digitag 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 no i'm saying it wrong <laughs> this is a, it's a backup it's it's good there's a well, thing there's a I thing saw, uh, go ahead oh i was just gonna say there's a there's got to be something in i don't know what it is but <laughs> All these synth manufacturers, either we can't see the name right of the company or the product sometimes. We should, we should come up with like the Urban Dictionary on how to say synth names. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you make a bunch of money. Anyway, what were you right. saying? Uh, no, I I, uh, I was watching um, Cuckoo uh, do a, um, a video on it. Um, and he's, he's a huge Electron guy anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. And... I don't know. I kind of like the things that he was doing. What it really reminds me of, and I got to tell you, is it reminds me of a TR-8S. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, except see. all the TR kits, right? Or does it have some stuff that sounds like an 808, 909, 707? Yeah, I don't know what it, it comes with. You it does have some there. samples like that. That's but true. Yeah, you, you could can put them in could there. Put yeah, them in there. Yeah, exactly. That's a good point. Always forget about that. But I was watching the demo that he did, and um, I don't know. It sounded pretty cool, and it looked like he was having fun. I mean, well, Cuckoo makes things look fun anyway every time he does something. So <laughs> I watched um, him do a whole thing on the pocket operators once, and I was like, I can't believe I just sat here and watched like an hour tutorial on this. <laughs> but he, yeah, he does. He's got, a, he's got a gift. One of those things with him is that he just – he knows how to like – lure you in it's the weirdest thing because i do the same thing sometimes i'll watch stuff and i go what the hell am i watching this for right. but it's like, his never gonna buy but that. it's his personality too yeah. you know what i mean yeah he's a super cool guy yeah he seems he seems like a super cool cool dude yeah i wouldn't mind meeting him in real life he seems like an awesome dude yeah awesome. well i was looking i was looking for him go get a beer <laughs> go get a beer at the harbor go get a beer down the street kid kid you got to throw that in there. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I was thinking about the kid. Um, uh, how about those Patriots kids? Oh, man. Dude, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a Broncos fan. I, I hate the Patriots. I, I, I know you do. <laughs> I mean, you got to give them credit. But I'm kind of tired of seeing them win the Super Bowl every fucking year. Sorry. No, I mean, that's that's good for you up there in the Six Northeast. rings. Yeah. Six rings. Is that the most ever? Or is it tied? Uh, the, the Steelers have six, six. Uh, but okay. they didn't. But they didn't win it in seventeen years. It took them a long time to do that. Yeah, yeah. 
you know. You know, we got we got something going on here, guys. You know what I'm saying over there, jerky? Yeah, jerky. <laughs> you bring your fucking tools. <laughs> 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 anyway, uh, MIDI Association announces MIDI 2.0 prototyping. So this was kind of something that came up at NAM, NAM I believe. Um, and the MIDI 2.0 standard is being worked on. I, I've been hearing about this for a very long time. And if it delivers on some of the things it promises, I think it would be extremely beneficial. Do you guys know anything about this at all? I have anything to say. <clears throat> Any comments? Not enough other than, God damn, it's been a long time. Well, that's, that's Dave, a long time ago. That's Dave Smith doing it right the first time, you know? That's right. Yeah. Honestly, like, okay. other than some resolution issues, it'd be nice to get a little more resolution out of MIDI. And, uh, like, having, the, having this uh, require less setup for a lot of these uh, hardware controllers... Uh, especially with software, I think um, it's going to be it'd be really cool. So, yeah, it's actually a, um, they show you there's a, a MIDI 2.0 environment of what it should look like and how it responds. Uh, that is on uh, djtechtools.com. Oh, I'll have to um, check that out. Yeah, MIDI, MIDI 2.0 is coming, prototyping of next generation or new generation of MIDI devices underway. Um, it has been a long time. I mean, I've been listening to people talk about. I remember what two years ago, even the guys in Sonic State were talking about it. Yeah, um, like it's been, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I and but I, the thing with MIDI is, there's just so much involved with it. Uh, it was just, you know that it it was literally done. One version 1.0. Was done so well that it hasn't been updated yeah. in almost what for almost forty years. Like when did MIDI come out? Eighty three or something? Jesus. Well, there's been add-ons like MPE and NRPN, <laughs> sure, and things like that. So, yeah, and to make it more stable and stuff like that. Yeah, but um, it's, that to me is two point Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I just think it's ironic that most of our synthesizers today that are being made have CV. Um, <laughs> right, it's like going back to the Stone Age, just because. Yeah. Man. Well, the thing about CV is, is it's a guaranteed signal. Yeah. It's a pulse. Yep. You know. So I mean, with MIDI, there could be all kind. I remember, dude. I remember how going through like MIDI hell, we used to call it, uh, and you'd get MIDI gobble, and things would start happening with the DAR and the synthesizer. Would I had a wave station that just didn't like MIDI being fed through it from my computer and it would just spit out all <laughs> kinds of shit i know and exactly screen... what you're talking about because with all this gear in here some this is a pain in the ass the setup in here for midi and i use everything yeah. that's in here so i totally hear you on that it's just so <laughs> bizarre you know and and like hopefully you know hopefully 2.0 will fix that but then again now you got to get all these other people on board with updates and and Yep. Getting the stuff to well, it's supposed to be backwards compatible, so at the very least, you'll have 1.0 compatibility on any, but it's not true. Upwards, you're not going to be able to get a 1.0 synth to run no, V2. no, of course, you're not. Gonna, the hardware has to be there, to and support. you're gonna have to, yeah, you just have to rough it with your MIDI 1.0 that's worked for almost 40 fucking years. You think you'd be all right, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, CV gate. <laughs> let's get our CVs, let's get our CVs on. So yeah, I'll have to check out uh, Echo. If you can send me a link to that uh, environment link or whatever, yeah. and I'd like yeah. to check that out. We put it in the in the uh, description of the video as well for anyone else who wants to check it out. That's pretty much I all do, I had for I do it right now for you, comrade. Oh, <laughs> all right, kid. <laughs> okay, then. All right, there, jerky pants. All right, jerky ass. Sizzle nuts. Don't make don't make me come over there, chisel chest. <laughs> <laughs> Is that we have a I have a running joke with one of the guys I work with, and we always quote jerky boys to each other all the time. Oh anyway, my god, those guys were hilarious, man. This is funny. You start start talking about that. It's like, yeah, oh yeah, I know that. Are those guys still doing stuff. I haven't heard uh, no, they got arrested. 
Oh, they did? Really? Are they in jail? Yeah. <clears throat> uh, they... No, not anymore. But uh, yeah, they got they got they got screwed big time, dude. You should read the article about them. They they did I'll some stupid shit. It. But they they were... <laughs> they were doing the craziest stuff back then. They were funny. Yeah. Uh, remember what was it? Uh, what was the one? Was it his name was Saul? Yeah, Saul Rosenberg. I fell down the stairs and I my shoes that... fell off. Yeah. I need a box, and I'm going to send my wife Seaworthy. <laughs> Whatever he says. <laughs> oh, my God. That's good stuff. I want to listen to that now. Thank I you. just sent it to you. Cool. Thank you. I'll get that added to the description for anyone who wants to check out the MIDI 2.0 environment, I guess, on this website. And um, Plus, the guy sells some pretty cool cables on this website. Uh, DJTechTools.com. I don't think I've ever been there yeah. before. Like sweet waters, like my house, like I live on. Yeah, same, side. same here, man. <laughs> I totally like. It. I, I, I guitar center. If you ever heard this, a thousand apologies, but Sweetwater, they're my boys, man. I, what they did for me, drop shipping that synth and stuff was pretty cool. You know what I mean? Yeah, because you had a situation where they sent you, they sent you the wrong thing, or they ordered the wrong thing for you, right? They ordered and sent me the wrong. They sent me the module, the um the rev two module and i did open it you know i cracked it open of course i never i never hooked <laughs> it up though. um and then i ended up uh calling him up and telling him hey you know this isn't what i wanted blah 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 and the guy says well when are you going to be home i said tomorrow i'm off and he said all right he said well expect the uh keyboard to be at your house uh at uh, 10 30 in the morning and i was like what he says yeah we'll drop ship it to you and uh, lo and behold, it was there. I mean, I, awesome. I, there's a story behind that, but we don't have any time. <laughs> um, and then I just packed up the box of the one they sent me, and I just drove it down to FedEx and shipped it back to them, and then they refunded me my money. Um, wow. So, yeah, so that was nice pretty smooth, sweet. My nice smooth process. Nice. And I've always had good experiences with them with stuff, and I haven't had too much trouble with gear other than my Deep Mind 12 <laughs> was DOA. Uh, but they took care of it immediately, just like similar experience where you had, except instead of getting the wrong thing, I did. Mine was just broken. But right, uh, right. yeah, they always do a good job over there, as far as I'm I, concerned. I love my Deep Mind 12, man. It's such a great synthesizer. <laughs> Why are you laughing oh, at that, Kevin? <laughs> no, I'm just. <clears throat> it's an awesome synth. Yeah. I want to try. I want to try getting that thing to. Uh, Are you going like to give us a? You going to give us a demo right now? Echo? Oh, me? Yeah, yeah I, heard you, I, heard, I heard some synth bass there. No, all I did was I. I so I. This is um, this is one of the patches from uh, from uh, Geo Synths that I bought. Oh yeah. And I oh. and I tweaked it and uh, it's it's very very dark and beautiful. Especially that yeah, last note there. Nice. Yeah, it's just, so, it's so big. So, yeah, Geosense, for anyone who's not aware, he is a YouTuber and he uh, releases patches for all kinds of different synthesizers. And um, I've even seen him do some live streams here and there. Yeah, yeah. He's a cool guy. Really recommend uh, checking out his channel and possibly picking up some patches for your synthesizer. Yeah, and he does tutorials too yeah. on how to make patches. So. Yeah, this stuff's not badly priced either. I mean, um, for the the bundle, what was really cool. I got the DeepMind 12 bundle. Uh, was the what was it two and uh, the first one and the second one, um, and I only paid totally like forty two dollars or something like that for it. Uh, but it comes with a hundred and hundred and twenty seven patches each bank, uh, which is nuts. You know what I mean? Um, and then he also just came out with one called the Revolution, uh, which is the Rev, uh, the Prophet Rev Two, One and Two. Mister Kaufu, he did one. Uh, you have, you have, uh, you have a, a Ob a, a OB Six, right? yeah, yeah well, it's six. Dave Smith's Ob Six, yeah, yeah, because so, he's got an Evolution Volume Two DSI Ob Six as well. Are you well. going to show it to us, Kaufu? Let me see your Ob Six, buddy. 
Again? <laughs> Thank you, asshole. I'm just giving you a hard time. You doing that? that was in the last show. <laughs> I'm just giving you a hard time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'm getting delirious. So. Yeah, it's, but it, no, it, uh, it, uh, just real quick, it's uh, $65 is for uh, Volume 1 and 2 bundle um, by him. And I've listened to them. They're actually pretty good. Um, Are they over six? I, yeah. Okay. Uh, what I like about it, too, is um, I, like, I love... When guys build patches that well, uh, what I like about it is being able to go in and tweak them yourself yeah. uh, and kind of make them your own. And he tells you to do that, which is really cool. Um, but, yeah, you should definitely check it out, man. Yeah, and I think it's not for function, so there's no reason why you shouldn't. So Exactly. <laughs> you should always yes. fuck with the presets, period. Yep. Yes. Always mess them up. It's a good, good way to learn a synthesizer, actually. Absolutely. So, yeah. well, anything else you guys need to say to the world on YouTube right now? Um, Cal Food, I, I don't know what happened to your shot here, but right now we can... We've just got your uh, your heads chopped off, so sorry about that. My head's chopped off? I'll, I'll try to fix that. I don't know. Oh, there Wait, we go. Real Look at that! All right. There it is. Okay, <clears throat> anyway. One real quick thing. I did check out the Roland VT4. I had a chance to mess with that. Oh, yes. How is it? Uh, it's awesome. Is it light years it, ahead of the VT3? Yes. Okay, because the VT3 um, I always thought was kind of... Eh. Yeah, it's the VT3. Also, the you have to really tweak with, mess with it to get some you know decent volume out of it without being distorted. Um, this was clear crisp and some of the uh they had it hooked up to a um an sh uh one a <clears throat> so i was playing around with that with the little keyboard that's on there um and it sounded awesome so that i lied that's definitely i i did lie i'm sorry you lied I'm about buying. you're buying that you got gas for that uh <laughs> it's a vocoder man yeah how much you know? how much custom how much customizability that's not even a freaking word uh, how much can you customize the sounds on there? That would be my only question. Like, how, how far, how, how much of it is just, like, stock, like, preset types of uh, vocoding? Well, I mean, that, that, that's one thing, even, like, with the VT3, that this, the presets on there are kind of, you know, whatever. They're, they're, they are what they are, but that's why when you stop messing with it um, and get the sound that you want out of it, then save it. You know, that's, that's what I do. Um, yeah. So... But, is, you know, is the VT4 more functional for that type of exploration? Yes, because um, unlike the VT3, you can connect it to a keyboard and actually use it as a real vocoder. Oh, okay. Oh, I didn't know you couldn't do that with the VT3. Yeah, I, I. it says you can, and I tried several different ways. I even contacted Roland and... They were like, well, if you hook it up to uh, an MX, was it the... Uh, the MX-1. The, yeah, the, um, the mixer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a way to do it that way. Um, that and I'm like, well, I'm not going to... seems really weird. <laughs> I'm not going to buy a that $600 mixer to do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. it's pretty odd. But, yeah, the VT4 actually, you, you take a MIDI cable right out <laughs> and right into a keyboard. Oh, food. <laughs> I don't know what happened with your shots, but... There's. I will try to. We'll just. I'll just leave it on the two shot here. We had you lined up pretty good there before. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> All right. Well, folks, I think we're gonna call that a show. I want to say thank you to Echo Craft and Mr. Cowfood for joining me here once again. I'm sure, we'll have you guys back on the show, of course, at some point in the future. And um, yeah, thank you. I thought. Thank you. Nam 2019, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments, or you have gas for any of this gear coming up. And uh, be sure to like, share, comment, subscribe, all that cool stuff. And uh, see you guys later. All right. Good night.